Hi guys, and welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry option. In this particular video, uh, we're just going to have, uh, I guess, continue on the sequence and looking at sulfuric acid and just look at some of the important reactions that involve sulfuric acid. Some of the properties, uh, just to start us off, so sulfuric acid, as you would be aware, is a colorless substance. Um, it's viscous, it can, can be poured. Um, it's dense and non-volatile. Uh, it is a diprotic acid, so it liberates two H plus ions per molecule. It has a boiling point of around 338 degrees C. It readily ionizes in water, which makes it a strong acid. And it's relatively cheap to produce. Probably the most important um, things that we need to be considering, and this is going to be more important uh, in one of the later videos when we look at safety around sulfuric acid, is this process in which the sulfuric acid um, becomes diluted to form a solution. So you can see the change here from um, concentrated sulfuric acid uh, in liquid form, virtually 100% uh, all molecular, to a dilute solution in which there are ions uh, dissolved in water. This is a very exothermic reaction, a, a delta H value of minus 90 kilojoules per mole. And the problem with this is that you um, need to be very careful when diluting sulfuric acid uh, because this high energy output can result in some potential safety concerns such as vaporization of the water, splashing of the acid, um, sometimes you can get the production of a mist. So the important thing is that the acid should always be added to the water, not the other way around. If you pour a little bit of water onto very concentrated acid, that intense production of heat can cause um, the water and the acid to spit and fly around. Um, and that's very potentially dangerous. So we always add the acid to um, the amount of water that we're going to. So if you wanted to dilute some acid uh, by tenfold, for example, so you wanted to say add 10 mils to 90 mils of water, then you would prepare the water and then you would add those 10 mils of acid to the water. So it becomes very, very dilute and then just slightly increases in concentration as you add more acid, rather than diluting it down from very concentrated uh, backwards. Now, whilst it's true that uh, other strong acids like a nitric acid or chloric acid um, are also exothermic during their ionization, uh, they don't produce the same amount of heat as sulfuric acid when it is ionized. The process of ionization, now uh, you can see down there, um, one of the things, of course, that happens with our sulfuric acid is that it can uh, very quickly go from the aqueous form into the um, ionized form uh, because that equilibrium, well, because there's no equilibrium basically, because it's a strong acid, uh, it completely ionizes and therefore all of the um, sulfuric acid molecules or hydrogen sulfate molecules are all going to become hydronium ions and also um, hydrogen sulfate or bisulfate ions. Now, there's two important reactions really that we need to look at when we're thinking about um, sulfuric acid. And the first is that sulfuric acid has a very strong affinity for water and that makes it a very good dehydrating agent. It can absorb moisture directly from the air to form an aqueous solution. So a little bit of um, sulfuric acid somewhere can actually take moisture out of uh, a gas. Um, like air or helium or a liquid petroleum gas or whatever. And so this ability of sulfuric acid to act as a drying agent can be very, very important. In concentrated form, um, it removes hydrogen and oxygen atoms from a large number of compounds um, as water molecules. Uh, we've kind of seen this effect in the dehydration of ethanol, the production of esters, uh, the dehydration of hydrated molecules as well, is a place where the um, ability of sulfuric acid to act as a dehydrating agent can occur. So um, the presence of um, sulfuric acid not actually reacting with this molecule, but simply being in close proximity can draw 
the water molecules out, leaving us with a dehydrated form of sulfuric, um, of copper sulfate in this case, and uh, of water molecules. And they often will be absorbed uh, directly in to create a, an aqueous solution of the sulfuric acid. The other important reaction is when sulfuric acid acts as an oxidizing agent or an oxidant. And the simplest example of this is when we react it with uh, different metals. If you look at the ionic form here, the magnesium is going to be um, becoming magnesium ions, Mg2+, plus, plus 2E-. Minus. This is a loss of electrons and, and oxidation is lost, so this is an oxidation half reaction. So the other one must be the H plus ions, two H plus ions gaining electrons to form H2 gas. This is the reduction step. And so during um, this reaction, the sulfuric acid is going to oxidize the magnesium and it itself is going to be reduced. These two reactions are very important reactions and ones that are, just should be part of what you can recall when you're asked about the behavior, particularly the chemical behavior of sulfuric acid. Thanks for watching.